Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. Please don't be alarmed by the tone of my voice. The last week of clouds managed to drop my motivation down to levels comparable to the number of stars in the original Hubble Deep Field image. All that remains is an inspiration that peaks as much as my PhD graph and a new idea that will truly show my hype for this hobby. On that note, welcome to my next project. I'm going to photograph a nebula I shot once before, the hype is real. And I know some of you already waited until this would happen on my channel. This video is sponsored by The Returning Summer. With 40 degrees Celsius in the forecast I can prepare for two things. Clear nights and an average surface temperature of my room comparable to the arctic poles if we don't do anything about climate change. Yes, there are some jokes in this video and some bitter truths. And while we're still on it, the earth is not flat. Mankind has been to the moon, Dylan did not fake his eyes as lunar transit image and every comment that has the slightest hint of these things will live exactly as long as measles when they are vaccinated. Where was I? Yes, right, clear nights. Let's take an image of the wizard nebula. Let's start with the basics. The creative stuff has to wait for the end of the video, since it doesn't exist yet. Say hi to my first image of the wizard nebula. If you can remember, the previous video on this image was a very bad idea. That's why it seems appropriate to me to introduce another bad idea with it. And a thing I realized quite early when I had this idea, a thing that I cannot do is to stand in front of the camera and talk. That's why I have to bring up a small placeholder. Hang on. With the correct mindset to go forward, let's talk about this pile of gas in space of which you want to take a photo. The image you have seen is grayscale, that's how the pro is called black and white, because it was shot through a narrowband filter. What do you think? Which of the astronomical wavelengths was captured in this beautiful but way too noisy image? You all guessed wrong, H better of course. Being a rather large pile of hydrogen in space, we could do ourselves and the object a favor and shoot narrowband. Without the money to get ourselves a deep sky mono camera, along with a filter wheel and all these fancy filters, we have no choice but to use a one-shot color camera and a filter that was made exactly for this purpose. I've had worse ideas. I've seen your comments talking about the advantage of a mono camera, I know about them. But the amount of money on my bank account made for astrophotography equals a regular human heartbeat. No mono equipment in the foreseeable future. You know the drill. We have the choice to shoot a narrowband RGB composite, or we could interpret the narrowband subs itself as one shot color. You now have 3 seconds to vote about these two options. Alright, the votes are in. I placed my vote on the composite image. Let's look at the results. God damn it. Seems like we're going to shoot in one shot color tri narrowband image. The things you need for such an image is a one shot color camera and a tri narrowband filter. All of you who already knew that, you will get a cookie at the end of the video. As I said, the creative part of this video has not been created yet. Let's go over the equipment, I still need more time to channel my inner Donald Trump. This is a Skywatcher HEQ5, the legs bend further than the space time close to M87. Thanks again Frankfurt Airport luggage department. This new feature makes every setup unique. This is a classic Omegon a triplet. The focus draw tube can handle as much weight as my i7 processor can handle pics inside. The auto guiding is handled by an Omegon and Altair Astro Combo. I can't say anything bad about these two, they just work. PHD also controls my dither ring. You may have seen that there's no SD4 cable running from the camera to my mount. As with many of Dylan's videos, I watched it and followed its advice immediately. I recommend you to do the same, it just makes sense. But I have to tell you the truth, call me conservative, my cable's not burned. It's just placed in the box where I store all my things I once used. There it waits together with the red dot and the illuminated reticle. They've been replaced by this wonderful process called plate solving. If you have the chance to include plate solving in your workflow, just do it. It saves more time than the Twitter block function saves me from Donald Trump tweets, and that's hard to accomplish. Let us continue the rant about why my equipment is bad. This is a Z W O S I camera. Rent over. My latest purchase to quench my thirst for astrophotography equipment is the Pole Master. While I can't say anything bad about its build quality and performance, this manual is written in English more broken than the English of my friend Louis, and that's quite a statement. I know that it's difficult to translate Chinese letters into Western language, but I think that even Google Translate would have done a better job. If you would like to see a video about this thing on my channel, you can suggest it in the comments. But I recommend that you first take a look on Astro Backyard's video about this. I really don't need to repeat everything that he said. Now that this stuff is out of the way, 
let's get to the creative part, the part where we actually talk about the imaging night. With the mount polar aligned, connected, PhD calibrated, camera cooled and plate solving running, let's look at the composition we want to choose. I wanted to introduce this feature in the Astro for the challenge video, but you know how this plan was ruined. But this time, welcome back to Stellarium. We all love it, for a good reason. I know that sounds quite strange in the source, but trust me. This feature I want to talk about is not originally loaded in the software. You need to enable it in the settings menu. It is called Digitized Sky Survey and made my image planning so much easier. When enabled, it overlays the sky in more or less real time with actual deep sky images. This allows you to see way more nebulosity, the actual size of small targets and objects that don't have a deep sky image yet. In combination with the camera field of view feature, this enables us to plan our imaging nights beforehand. And not while looking at an overly stretched camera exposure in the middle of the night with frozen fingers and toes. But what would this new video idea be without some rant? Which hotkey is called Toast? I did not manage to find this until this very day. With the center of the image manually chosen, and the correct rotation of the camera tested by the plate solving process, we can start imaging. I tested some short exposures on this target a few days ago. The result was as adequate as the number 10 describes Earth's gravitational acceleration. For those of you who don't understand this joke, the cookie is now divided by two. I'm going to stay with the casual 5 minute subs at Unity Gain and try to get as many images as I can before this night has finished. I will also have to shoot a new library of correction frames since I'm trying to learn how Pix Insight works. In the rare case you don't know about the most advanced and dedicated pre- and post-processing astrophotography software, the cookie is now gone. Learning this software is about as hard as learning quantum mechanics. And trust me, I know what I'm talking about. But after many hours of hard work and understanding, I managed to produce a starless version of M13, the Great Globular Cluster in Hercules. You can achieve this effect by using the Morphological Transformation tool and setting the iterations to a value between 20 and the sun's average core temperature. As you know, your feedback is most valuable to me, and most particularly in this video. So please leave a comment down below what you think of this idea. The next thing I have to do now is to get some tea, because after 10 minutes of speaking like this, my throat actually feels like a piece of sandpaper. I really have the feeling that my hype for this hobby is truly shown in this type of video. Let's take a look at my second picture of the Wizard Nebula, clear skies, and may the night be with us.